Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to today's episode. It is a stunning, beautiful spring day here in Edmonton, Canada, and I am feeling optimistic. This is our second update on the old general store. We have not done an update in a while um, because we've had a few roadblocks, but I'll tell you about that in a second. But first, my son and I, Jason, are going to go and uh, dig a hole in the backyard because we've got to do a little digging and a little moving around. You ready for that? Yep. Okay, well, let's hop out and I'll give you guys the update on how things have been going and what we're doing right now. For those of you that have been watching for these updates, we have a plan and that is to build an addition on the empty lot right here, right next to the building. There's never been anything developed on that piece of land and we've decided that we're going to do that. But uh, it's met with a few challenges. The first thing we had to do was come up with a plan for what we were going to do. We hired a drafting company, Skohall Drafting. They did a great design for us, very happy with it. Um, that has to get uh, through the permit process. Now, that normally takes you know a few weeks, but we've had some extra challenges because of COVID-19. That slowed everything down. There's a lot of people that are laid off at the city. Uh, and so there's been an extra delay because of that. But here's what happened. We send the plans in. They say, great. Uh, but we need you to put a bigger back door on it. So we put a bigger back door on it. Then they say um, we need to make sure that the fire hydrants are close enough to your building for an expansion, which I would have thought I would have been grandfathered in since this property has been here for like 100 years. But now we have to wait for a fire marshal to come and walk the property and make sure that there's a fire hydrant. If you saw one in the video just a minute ago, that is um, not a hooked up fire hydrant. It's one we actually are selling at the store. They can just use that one. Um, either way, we are still waiting on that. The other thing that they threw at me was that uh, they wanted me to plant 13 shrubs, trees, and flowers in front of the new addition. Well, I don't know if you see the, the span here, that's only about 25 feet. Can you imagine putting 13 trees along the front here? It'd be like a forest. So um, then we had to call them back or write them back and say, well, can we count for some of the ones that are already in the backyard? And they said, yes, thankfully. So we think we've got everything we need other than the, uh, the permit from the fire inspector for the fire hydrants. So assuming that comes through in the next couple of weeks, I should be able to pour concrete here in June. So all of the old trees and shrubs and bushes that were in the front here have got to go because that's going to be a concrete pad in the front. We're planning on putting some towering birches along that side, um, some tiger lilies. This sidewalk will get taken out and this will turn into a little flower garden. Uh, and I have a special old fashioned um, something that's going to be painted on the side of the wall here that'll look really cool so i don't want anything really tall here i want it to be sort of lower so it doesn't distract from what we're planning but um the reason why i've got uh, jason who's playing the shovel like a rock and roll guitar here with me today is if we walk over here kiddo we can see that there are a couple things that are going to be in the way for construction uh we have some healthy rhubarb which I don't want to lose. I would love to continue to have rhubarb on the property. And um, we're going to try and transplant it here before the cement guys come in and uh, rip up the whole backyard. I've actually decided to put it on the other property line on the other side of the fence. There we get good early morning sun. We have to dig that up real good. While Jason's doing that, I'm going to head inside and grab a few supplies. Don't ask me why I ended up buying an old ride-on boat. Actually, you can ask me why and I'll tell you because it's cool, but where am I gonna put it? Uh, that I don't know. I've gotta make a little bit of room in the front of the store, but first off, I gotta drag it out of here, move it indoors. Okay, well, it fits. Let me tell you, the base of this thing is not light. I guess I wouldn't want people walking away with it from in front of the grocery store, but it'll sit back here in our back room. Somebody will come along. Now, normally I'd be inclined to do the restoration, get it back to this nice original sort of seafoam green. Great color. But in this case, we'll leave it for the next person. I don't want to get into another big restoration on something right now when I have a building to worry about. 
one of our customers had purchased all of these little vintage big little books. I gave them a heck of a deal. I think it's basically a few bucks a piece. Since they took the whole thing, I've got to get those mailed out. And I hear Jason calling me. I'm going to go check on him. How's the hole going over here, kiddo? Good. I dug out an eyeball tree. Yeah, we have to widen it up a little bit. I can help with that too. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's go dig up the plants. Now rhubarb is best moved in fall. We don't have that luxury. So I'm hoping this stuff makes it. Uh, we're gonna get it transplanted and over in the new spot. Transplant is a success. Just gonna get the garden hose, give it a good watering, and all this week it's supposed to rain, so it should have a chance of getting used to its new home over here. Before we get to work on getting the cement poured, I wanna make sure that our existing store looks as good as possible. Now, I'm waiting on my friend Dave to come, and he's gonna be doing a little painting on the side of the wall, but we wanna make sure that we do a little bit of work to the front, and as you can see, I've got my handy dandy helper with me, and uh, we're getting a little work done on the front. So the lower part of the front of our store, the paint was all peeling off. We scraped it down. And now, Melissa, you are the expert painter here. I just dripped some on the brown right before you started that. That's true. <laughs> but this, it's okay. If you catch it while it's still wet, it's all right. So while Melissa works on that side, and thank you for helping me out today, You're Spitty. welcome. I am working my way from the top down here, and then we're gonna do the bottom. So we'll give it a nice fresh coat of paint. Make it spick and span. Well, I think that's it. Definitely looks nice and clean. Yeah, it does. I even had a chance to mow the grass while I was here. It was starting to get long on that side. Forgot we had sod put down last year. But it's healthy. The sod lived. And the store looks nice and bright. Thanks for your help today, sweetie. You're welcome. <laughs> been a couple days since I moved the rhubarb over and it looks like it's healthy. It's taken hold, which is good news. If you haven't had rhubarb pie or rhubarb dipped in sugar, you're missing out on a great treat. So I'm glad that that moved over. That's probably been on the property for 50, 60 years or more. So uh, nice to keep it around. I do have to do some yard work, but one problem is this old parts car Rolls Royce is in the way and I've scavenged pretty much everything I need off of it. Now it's just this rusting hulk in my backyard and I need it gone. I have a fella today that's supposed to come by and pick it up. So fingers crossed that goes. Then I can start thinking about where to plant some extra trees in the yard and really try and make a little backyard orchard here. Maybe down the road we can do our own fruits and jellies and jams um, that we can uh, use our own fruit from. But car's got to go first. Last one, we'll just bust up the roots, get it in place. And then there were trees. We'll have a nice happy little orchard back here before long. Thank you, Josh, for your help. Much appreciated. Green, the black, and the red, so it's probably another Coke sign. I think, well, this one was a sweet capital cigarette sign, I believe. And you know how I know this? So I was able to plant my cherry and our two plum trees, and I've enlisted the help of my entire family today uh, to plant those two little tiny bushes. But this is more of a outdoor activity. Those are blueberries. But we have to try and find a spot in the yard where they're gonna go. And I know blueberries need a lot of sunlight. So we're thinking maybe somewhere near or along the fence. We'll do a little walk around and see if we can find a good spot for it. You got them in? Yep. Those two little happy blueberry bushes. Is that your first time planting a bush or a plant? Oh, that's right. Yeah, so it's the second time. See? Yeah. Pays to come help out dad. And the rhubarb looks like it uh, is doing okay over here. And Abigail, what are you doing? I'm watering. It looks like you're threatening mom with the garden hose. I was just like, I want to spray everyone. 
No. You are just a little stinker, but we're gonna give the plants lots of water so those roots will take, well, take root. <laughs> uh, it needs to be really, really wet. You keep working on that. I'm gonna go up and see how Dave's doing. And it looks like Dave is here making some progress. I'm making a mess anyway. I thought it was, I see a red door and I want to paint it black, not I see a blue wall and want to paint it red. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's coming along though. Yeah, we'll get all the base colors on today and that way I can start lettering tomorrow. Great. That's the plan. Well, it's going to look pretty sharp. Are we doing, what are we doing for a border around it? Uh, Two-tone green with the highlight from the top left. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's why there's so much tape on there, Alex. I'm not going to try and pull straight lines. Oh, no, no, tape tape works just fine. Yeah, we need all the help we can get. All right, I'm going to uh, sneak past you there cool. and open up the door. Mm, are you trying to do a cat in the cradle? <laughs> not working out. Uh, Jason. It looks like something happened with the sunglasses on your head. You discovered our little pinpoint impression toy. Oh, so I did. <laughs> Either that or else you fell on it. And Abigail, you were watering the trees and it looks like you got, got watered. watered. Yeah, what happened? Steven happened. Steven happened. What is this? You gotta go super fast. We have a call into the city to have someone have a look and see if it will meet code. The pressure is good. The distance shouldn't be a problem because there's one actually just right behind me. Um, really, I just need somebody to inspect it and make sure it's okay because uh, they want us to install a fire hydrant and that's awfully expensive. And if you don't know what it costs to install a fire hydrant, we have one on sale at our store. That's an antique one that we're selling for $300 Canadian. So a couple hundred bucks US. The city says to install a fire hydrant for us is $750,000. Mine is clearly the better deal. <laughs> but that said, the reason it's so high is that the whole infrastructure on this entire street needs to be updated. And because I'm the first guy in who wants to do a development here in quite some time, they want to charge that entire expense to me. So I don't think that's exactly fair. So we are uh, putting our best foot forward and talking to council and talking to the city to see if we can bypass that. Right now, I don't have any news. So we're a little bit stalled out on the development plan and on the building permits, but I'm hopeful that we'll hear something in the next week or so. The plan was to get the cement pad poured in the next couple of weeks, but because the city is delayed right now, we got pushed back another eight weeks or so, which means that our cement pad that we had to pre-book six months in advance would have to get pushed and that wouldn't be able to happen until next year. So because I've already spent thousands of dollars for permits and fees, we wanna make sure that we do whatever we can to try and make this happen this year before winter hits. In the meantime though, we are doing a little mural on the side of the wall and our magician Dave over there is working his way through it, trying to do something in the old kind of 30s, 40s fashion. The vision here is that there will be a patio set back just a little bit beyond that window. That'll all be poured in with nice little tables, maybe umbrellas, and then a building set back. So when you're sitting here, there'll be some pillar birches, some nice flowers on either side, a little flower box underneath this sign. It'll just have a really great atmosphere. So for now, that's about as far as I can go until I hear more back from the city. And you're having a little bit of a dilemma right now, I guess. I am, but it's pretty minor. I've basically taken your picture here. Yeah. And because we changed the proportion a little bit, the interesting thing about this is that the basic principle of keeping everything in a certain sight line squares out from corner to corner. So bearing that in mind, what I've done is I've changed the angle on the Coca-Cola bottle a little bit. Okay. Um, so the only thing that's going to change basically is your fluid line is going to be kind of like that. Right, so it's level. Right, and I've completely cheated because I'm going to use the cladding to cut it off. Oh, okay. Well, that work with what you got, I guess. Absolutely. And I see you're kind of making yourself, you've, you've got some of the lettering blocked in. Mm -hmm. And... That way I won't spell anything wrong. These are, LG is light green, brown, black. So it's like a giant paint by number. I feel like a little kid. Well, it's it's a good idea to 
kind of block it out like that and put your colors. I didn't realize that's how you guys did that, but that makes perfect sense. So you know what you're supposed to be painting. I'm excited to see what that's gonna look like. I think it'll look appropriate on the side of an old general store. I gotta get a Dave in action shot here. Oh yeah. You get ready to lay down the lettering? You bet. Well, that's it for now. I'm gonna let Dave do his magic on the wall there. When I come back in after the weekend, I'm sure I'll see some real good progress. As for the development permit, well, that's just a waiting game now. I won't know more until Monday and we'll see if um, our building will pass the requirements so we don't need to pay $750,000 to put a fire hydrant in, which I can't afford to do. Basically, if they say I have to do that, the project's dead. And then I'll have to think about plan Bs in terms of what to do with that little side yard there. But it'd be great to be able to put up another building. I need the space, but um, right now it's not in my hands. Um, so it's a waiting game. But thank you for watching today's episode. We'll see you guys all soon and stay tuned for more. Bye for now.